Senator Patricia Torres Ray joins me now to talk a little bit about that conversation she'd like to have about recruiting and retaining teachers in the state. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Senator, you brought this issue up in a committee about a week ago. And why do you think it's such an issue in the state right now? Or are you just trying to spearhead something that could be a bigger issue? I think it's a huge issue. And uh, we definitely need to pay attention to what is happening. We have a significant decline in the number of students who are pursuing the teaching profession in Minnesota. We have a significant decline on the number of uh, uh, people who are obtaining licensure to teach in the classroom in Minnesota. And we definitely have uh, an environment that is just really negative around the teaching profession. And you talk to students, you know, I, I uh, visit with students as a result of my uh, chair position quite often. And I always, now I'm asking this question, will you pursue a teaching profession? Would you become a teacher? And the answer, is no. And why? What are some of the responses? Well, several, several issues, I think. Um, but I think the number one issue is that there is a perception that the teaching profession has become much more difficult than what it used to be, and that is not appreciated. And on top of that, we have very low salaries. So the average salary in Minnesota is $34,000. And uh, we had an increase in salary in the last two years, but uh, not significant enough to make a difference. So the latest report, I have a high school uh, graduate that went to college, and we were looking at these reports about what are the top you know, 100 professions in, in the US to pursue. And of course, engineering and health sciences are very good professions in the US. And the bottom professions, uh, social services, and teaching. You know, it's a profession that is not really viewed as a profession that in the long term will pay off. You have very little opportunities to really move up in, this case, in, in, in your job. You know, you can become a principal, but if you're a teacher, you stay as a teacher and then you have very low salaries. And so there is all of these factors that really contribute to that. Um, in a, in a way, not just perception, but reality that is facing the profession today. And the U.S. Department of Education did outline 20 different academic areas with shortages in the state of Minnesota. Several additional shortages came under the special education umbrella. So do you believe it's the legislature's role to try to help fill these gaps? Absolutely, because we need to respond to the needs of these children. And you identified uh, one of the areas where we have uh, a, a, gr a great increase of uh, students um, in, with disabilities. So we have, a, a, in, in Minnesota in particular, we have a greater number of children with disabilities attending our schools today. We also have a great number of uh, children that are ELL, English language learners, who are now attending the schools. And other areas where we need teachers who have special training uh, to provide um, services to these children. and we don't have the capacity, we don't have the, 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 the uh, teachers right now with that training available in the classroom. So we have a significant problem, the growth, you know, in the need, in the need of, of, uh, for those professions, but no, no students pursuing that, that profession. There was a story in the Atlantic on October 18th, and it looked into the reasons that 40 to 50 percent of all teachers quit in the first five years, and this is nationally. And one of the responses that resonated was, we are held up to a really high standard for everything. Do you agree with this statement, and do you think this could factor in why, factor into the decision to not move forward with pursuing a teaching degree? I think this is the core issue that we really need to, to talk about right now. I think the U.S. has moved into this uh, conversation about high standards, accountability, and uh, business uh, results, uh, profit. You know, what, what uh, do we need to invest? What are we getting out of it? And the conversation about educating our children, uh, figuring out what works uh, in pedagogical terms, in academic terms is no longer part of the conversation because we want to measure everything statistically in economic terms. I think this is uh, a very problematic issue for education. And we see some countries that we don't want to compare ourselves to because they said, well, we're so different uh, from Finland, from, from instance, for instance, 
where uh, they have made significant investments in the training of teachers, not only around academic uh, issues, but also social issues. Tra uh, teachers are really being trained to understand how children and families are doing and how that plays a role in their academic performance. Well, we don't talk about that in the U.S. because we, we just want to measure numbers and the statistics and uh, outcomes that really play a role in economic growth. And I think that uh, we've gone too far in that direction and it is time for us to really come back to the conversation about uh, education, academic growth, how do we teach kids to be members of our social communities, of, uh, you know, how do we uh, talk about thinking and about processing information, what is true pedagogy. That's what we need to be talking about right now. Historically, the GOP traditionally believes that school issues should be left to school boards. Do you think this is an issue better left to individual districts to figure out on their own? For some districts, we talked to Senator Eric Pratt a little bit later in the show, and he says that teacher recruitment and retention isn't really a problem in the prior Lake District. So do you think that the, the issues with a district like that are obviously unique to one compared with maybe St. Paul. So should it be left to these districts or should it be the legislature stepping in? You know, I think that it's too simplistic to say you're on your own, you know, because tomorrow uh, his district may have uh, another problem that we need to help that district address. So I believe in, I think it's very, very important that we support the autonomy and the authority of the districts because the district, the board, members really know their districts best. And I think making decisions based on what you know, these are people who live in the community. These are people who really understand kids, understand teachers. If we are to recruit teachers, they know where to go. They know how to talk about this theme that we're talking about. So I think that is very important and very valuable and we need to preserve it. But to say that we, you're on your own, that you need to address your problems and and really come up with solutions to very significant problems on your own. That's a different conversation. I think we are responsible for one another. We, we are a community of education. And, you know, people often say, well, you know, whatever happened in the urban community, and you talk about all of these children of color now about these education gaps, well, that's Torres Ray and the people in Minneapolis, but that's not my problem. Well, we have a number of communities who are changing, and now that they are changing, uh, we need to talk about it because we've learned some lessons in Minneapolis that we can share. Uh, I have been reviewing some statistics in rural communities and the Native American community. It's absolutely alarming what is happening uh, to Native American students and Native American communities. The level of poverty, the lack of resources that are being provided to recruit Native American teachers. We have regions with you know, thousands and thousands of Native American kids that have, I think there is a, a specific region, I don't have the number, but I think it's 13,000 students in that region up north, and they only have two Native American teachers. So I'm reviewing that. Uh, those are statistics with my office right now really to present a picture about the lack of diversity in the teaching population, the lack of support that exists, the lack of training, uh, you know, the, how uh, low the salaries are, and then we're talking about accountability. And you're supposed to come to the classroom ready to teach and ready to put us in the map as, you know, the most uh, outstanding system in the country and to be able to uh, ultimately produce the best students who can compete uh, you know, or with countries around the world. And we're giving very little resources to get there. So we need to change that. Okay, Senator Torres Ray, when you're prepared to present legislation, we'd love to have you back on the show. And of course, we'll track your education policy committee as well. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm delighted.